What's good guys? So in this video, we're going to be making something that is very simple to make and it is how a player can pick up a tool in game, like how you make them um, have to interact with it instead of just it being a tool lying there and they run over it. This is something that they actually have to interact with. Um, so let's go ahead and find something in the toolbox. Now I don't recommend ever using the toolbox um, unless you know like to thoroughly check whatever it is you pick up in the toolbox um, and remove all the scripts if there are any. Uh, so let's just do this flashlight. And so I picked the flashlight. I'm now going to remove all their scripts. Uh, touch interest. All right, so I'm gonna take this flashlight. First, I'm gonna rename it because it shouldn't have a space. I'm gonna bring it over to replicated storage. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a script, okay? Uh, actually, I'm also gonna create a part. So we have a part right here. Now I'm gonna create a script. I'm gonna go into the script. Let me blow this up for you guys. So first, let's get our part. So local part equals script dot parent. No, I'm tripping. What am I doing? Workspace dot part. And now I'm going to do um, part dot touched. Uh, part dot touched. Connect on part touched create a function local function on part touched other other part uh, local character equals other part character if um, local human equals character find first child now you have to use find first child for this because you um, need to do that check it's very important that you do that check um, because if you were to just do character dot humanoid or character um, these humanoid um, it's just going to error and it's not going to be able to um, you're not going to be able to check it. So if not humanoid, then return. Or we could just do message. Um, part is not a character. Part is not a player's character's body part <laughs> or something. Part is not a player. We'll just do that. Part is not. Part is not a part of player's character. All right. Um, now we can go down to here, and we can say um, uh, Local spawn, we can create a new function actually. Spawn flashlight. Um, let's get replicated. Replicated storage equals game. Get service. Replicated storage um, local flashlight equals replicated storage plea for child flashlight um do 
local um, object clone equals flashlight handle clone object clone dot parent equals workspace position um, we'll do part that position actually um, object on dot position equals part dot position All right, and now what we can do is local proximity prompt equals new proximity prompt proximity prompt dot parent equals object clone. Now we can do proximity prompt dot triggered connect on proximity prompt triggered local function on proximity prompt triggered all right so on proximity prompt triggered layer because that's what's gonna be passed that's the argument that gets passed in this um in this event right here but we're probably not going to use it so i'm just going to put a score underscore right there um and so what we're going to do is object what we're going to do is um Object um, clone. We'll do a uh, floor object and then object clone. Okay, so what we're going to do is now we got to also go down here and do a function like this um, where um, on proximity prompt triggered so the floor object is object clone and then um, back back object um, And then the backpack object is flashlight. All right, so what we're going to do is backpack object clone um, we'll just do local clone clone dot parent equals um, player dot backpack so we actually did need player never mind all right player floor object destroy because we want to destroy it so we're basically simulating that the player is um Function flashlight, spawn flashlight, spawn flashlight, or we could just do spawn object, but whatever. Spawn flashlight, and then we'll also do part destroy.
I don't know why I'm gonna do it right here, but I just am. So part destroy. All right, so basically we have a part in the workspace, all right? And so we have created a touched event for that part. And this is the function that is ran when a player has touched that part. We run spawn flashlight. Spawn flashlight takes the handle of the object that we want to spawn, okay, because we don't want it to be a tool, we want it to be a object that the player has to interact with, okay, so we don't actually spawn the tool. Then we destroy the part, and we, um, at the same time, we're parenting the flashlight handle to workspace. And then we're also creating a proximity prompt, and we're parenting that to the flashlight handle. So that's what's going to show up and a player has to interact with. Then on proximity prompt triggered, so we're creating an event. On proximity prompt triggered, we're going to run on proximity prompt triggered um, function, okay, which gets the player and then we pass in the object clone and the flashlight. Um, then we're running on proximity prompt triggered. This function clones the flashlight to the player's backpack. And then um, parents it. Yeah, so we parent it to the player's backpack. And then we destroy the floor object, which is the object clone that is sitting inside of workspace. So let's test. And we have a workspace character. Oh, not character, other part dot parent. All right. Part is not a part, okay. Oh, it, it already, it already happened. So that's weird, hold on a second. If humanoid. Character, find first child, humanoid. If not humanoid, warn. Oh, I have to return. Okay. Boom. Forgot to return after my warn. All right. So now there's our part. It's right here. It's sitting right here. And boom. We have spawned a flashlight. So now what we're going to do is we're going to interact with it. Boom. Flashlight is now in our inventory and we can equip it as a tool. So yeah, that's pretty much that. And all right, guys, if you were wanting to um, use like press the E key bind, then you'd want to use user input service um, for that or context action service for that. So I would look up the Roblox API for that. But um, you can just use proximity prompts. A lot of games now just use proximity prompts because it's so efficient. There's nothing wrong with using proximity prompts, and I believe that it's automatically uh, made for like a platform, so Xbox, PC, mobile. You would never have to worry about having set up all those yourself in a script. So yeah, that is um, that's pretty much it. That's it for the video. Peace.